Hello there everybody, this is Terry Lawton here from climatechangeagenda.com and a couple of weeks ago I made a video entitled Filaments Falling from the Skies over Wexford and at the end of that video I um, asked for help in identifying these filaments and luckily within about an hour I was contacted by the Carnicom Institute in America uh, now if you're not familiar with the work of Clifford Carnicom, Clifford has been spent over 20 years uh, documenting the health and environmental impacts of the global climate engineering atmospheric assault against life on earth uh, so I sent off the samples the next day in the post and um, yesterday Clifford got back to me and he has sent me the uh, primary report uh, of his findings uh, this is the, f the primary report of many reports to come but this is the uh, microscopic results so I'm gonna get straight into it here so global validation the spider web problem by Clifford E Carnicom November 10th 2017 paper in progress the evidence of a chemical and biological assault upon the sanctity of this planet is at hand for close to two decades Carnicom Institute has patiently accrued and presented this record of violation to the global public the circumstances situations and reports that justify such serious claims are far beyond the point of concern the need for investigation or the entertainment of conjecture one of the primary materials repeatedly deployed in the operations is that of a unique environmental filament as it is, has been designated over the decades on this site the material has a long history of study beginning with the failure of the US EPA to identify an early sample sent to the, that agency in the in the year 2000 the prospect of a public health risk was also included in that correspondence and this was the primary basis of the request for identification the filaments have an airborne source unusual biological components were identified in that and similar samples at the time and they were documented as such the record of all correspondence with the EPA exists on this site an additional act of record from the year 1999 exists within the paper entitled environmental filaments January 2013 this paper further documents the thwarting of efforts paid for to disclose the nature of this material to the general public if you are a novice to the subject or if you are easily swayed by the words and reports of popular persuasion you will be told that you are dealing with nothing more than some mildly unusual events that involve flying or ballooning spiders you will not be given any ground scientific study that documents this strategy of shaping perception but you will be told that it is so network media reports will promulgate the storyline with an inclusion of the pur purported arachnid family to boot if this approach is adequate for your needs then it may be best to simply move on to the next story or commercial of the day the samples examined by this researcher are not spider webs all direct examinations demonstrate that they are of an unusual or artificial origin and of a complex chemical and biological nature no spiders accompany the samples that have been received ironically enough the filaments do share do indeed share some physical and chemical characteristics which actually with actual spider webs but this mimicry will only hold at a superficial level mainstream science reports recently announced to us that the creation of completely artificial spider webs is now commercially in place realistically we should not ignore the covert world of material science development along that path to disclose to put to public disclosure the internal composition of the filaments differs dramatically from spider webs and it is here that the truth will be found nanotechnology is usually inaccessible to the general public but the boundaries and frontiers of it are with some creative hacking as an understanding of the filament internal source internal structure develops uh, examinations at the nanometer level will certainly be required to understand the intentions and design more clearly in the meantime fortunately sufficient laboratory means to make the necessary distinctions between various forms and molecular structures exist a typical image of the airborne filament material at low magnification is as follows environmental filament sample magnification approximately 20 times this is this is the this is a magnification of the environmental filament I sent to Clifford Carnicom from Wexford here in Ireland 
Samples of this material, in some cases multiple, have been examined from the following countries. Australia, Serbia, France, USA, Ireland and Canada. Representative countries have that have collected and sent samples of the environmental fil filament material to Carnicom Institute over the past two decades. It has taken some effort over time to coordinate the receipt of these samples across the globe. This library of samples and the accompanying, ex accompanying examinations have recently crossed an important threshold. A physical sample has been delivered from Ireland that accompanies the on-site video immediately below. This combination creates an irrefutable presentation of video and physical evidence that demands a verdict. Under the current climate, no one can speak of spider webs alone without proving their case. Let us introduce this most recent report. On this occasion, it comes from, it comes to us from the grounds of Ireland. On-site video account in Wexford, Ireland, courtesy of Terry Lawton. What distinguishes this particular case in Ireland is that a physical filament sample has been sent in combination with the video evidence. These provide a more accurate assessment of the situation on the ground. The filament material received in this case in all respects known is identical to that sent to the US EPA close to 20 years ago. The material received from Ireland is not spiderweb material and the observations on the ground reinforce that claim. The conclusions of this paper are based upon numerous specific samples that have been received over a period of many years. These same materials are disturbingly known to be observed frequently and as documented are of global distribution. All of the filament samples received are identical in all respects at the microscopic level. There are numerous reports on this site of detailed analysis of these environmental samples and their visual and general organic equivalents to biological filaments symptomatic of the Margellan's health condition has been established. The ruse of proclaiming that spider webs are distributing themselves frequently and across the globe en masse have now played out it's, itself out. Ballooning spiders on a large scale are a real but rare phenomenon. The extensively examined environmental airborne filaments unfortunately are also quite real, but they do not originate from spiders. Seasoned readers may recall the first publicized sample in 1999 from California that formed a ribbon of material approximately one half thick, whatever, one half probably an inch thick and spanned a length of 20 feet on the highway. That would be a problematic spider. The environmental filaments can no longer be considered rare at this point. The materials repeatedly dispersed to ground level are a public health hazard as originally proposed to the EPA, uh, US EPA approximately two decades ago. They are of a complex chemical and biological nature. These materials are known to be affecting the entire planet and all life that exists upon it. An additional purpose of this paper is, is to briefly present the various methods of laboratory analysis that have been used to establish that there are major differences between the filament field samples received and the examined spider webs. These methods include the following. Microscopic examination. The simplest and most direct method to determine if there is a difference between the two examples is simply to look at the samples under a microscope. So on the left here we have the environmental filament samples that I sent and on the right collected spiderweb samples sample. In this particular case the environmental sample is quite clean. The spiderweb material to the right does not uh, does have some debris captured with, within as expected. This occasional contamination is readily visual separated from the web filaments under the microscope. The spiderweb sample is composed of approximately one half dozen webs combined. Next, the materials are examined under the microscope at various magnification levels. The first series is taken at approximately 500 times magnification. The differences in appearances are not notable at this stage. However, it can be determined with careful, careful observation that the spider web filaments have a more linear quality to them than the environmental filaments do. This lower magnification level is not sufficient to readily identify the different structural nature between two sample types. Environmental filament microscopic examination. An increase, an increase in the wavy texture of the environmental filament versus the spider web is visible under close examination, approximately 500 times. 
So that was the environmental filament image down to the spider web sample image. A smoother and more linear structure is observable within the spider web versus the, the environmental filament. The differences are not dramatic at this lower level of mag magnification. Next, the two samples are compared at a moderate level of magnification. Environmental filament examined under the microscope at, mo at moderate magnification. It is here that important differences can be determined between the visual characteristics and structural nature of the two filament types. The environmental filament shows much higher variability in form and structure than the spider webs do. The environmental filaments do indeed have a much wavier appearance to them. This has, been, this has direct bearing on the extreme adhesive and stretch qualities of the filaments, as has been repeatedly observed over the years. In addition, the filaments demonstrate budding growths, sorry, budding, they demonstrate budding growth forms that demonstrate a clear bio biological nature to the filaments as opposed to inert spider web generation. It is at this level of magnification that the case of fundamental difference and distinction exists between the environmental filament and the spider webs. It is insufficient and unjustified to make the claim for either type of filament existence without this minimum, min, minimum level of observation and analysis. This requires, this requirement exists for any journalistic or scientific reporting as well. That magnification was at 1250 times. Spider webs at mo moderate magnification. So that was the environmental filaments at 1250 here and down below are the spider webs at 1250. So the spider webs at 1250 uh, continue to show that they are simpler and more uniform in structure. There are no dramatic changes in the basic structure of the spider web that emerge at this level of observation. The, ge the geometry of the spider web is more linear and of smoother geometry and texture. There are no budding growth forms that take place in the spider webs after their formation. Okay. An independent microscopic image of spiderweb silk at a similar magnification level for comparison. The, quant the qualities of this image uh, match those that are presented within this report immediately above. And lastly, we have a relatively high level magnification. Microphotographs of the environmental filament at high magnification. This is at 5,000 times magnification. The truly unique qualities of this material are shown much more clearly at this level of observation. It can be understood from these photographs that driving structure and morphology of each filament lies interior to the filament. The bundled filament structure, submicron interior to an encasing filament, is a distinctive feature of many samples. The boundaries of nanotechnology are open to further investigation at this point. Budding growth structure can again be observed within this set. It is only at this level that the tentatively designated cross-domain bacteria is first observed. This microorganism has become the subject of intensive study in the association with the Morgellons health condition. A level of equivalency by numerous methods has been established between the environmental filaments and biological filament growths directly associated with the Morgellons health condition. So that was my filaments at 5,000 times magnification showing budding growths. And the spider web at, mag at that magnification 5,000 uh, the additional information available can be acquired here is, is, that can be acquired here is relatively uneventful. The geometry of the spider webs is again smoother and more linear in fashion. There is no variable and complicated inner microstructure visible at this stage within the spider webs. And there is no budding or extens extension growth from the spider web. The case that the environmental filaments are not spider webs is unequivocal and indisputable at this point of analysis. It is sufficient to end this report at this time. I will, however, add some additional comments at a later point. The conclusions reached have been made many times over in the past. The imagery here hopefully makes the point more clearly to those that remain in need. 
In early years of work, these same conclusions were reached largely by qualitative chemical testing along with modest microscopy resources available at the time. The conclusions were at the heart of the motive for seeking assistance from the US EPA close to two decades ago. This publicly funded agency failed in meeting its mission obligations at that time and it remains in negligence today. The failure of that agency in its primary mission to protect the health and welfare of the general public bears some level of responsibility for the current state of ecology of the planet. The worldwide occurrence and distribution of the problem shows us that the responsibility is now shared at a global level and by all countries and citizens of the world. It remains our decision as a species and as stewards of the, of the planet how we now choose to proceed. Nature is not under the control of human beings as we can only assume a limited role on a much larger scale. We do, however, remain responsible for our actions to our existing generation and to those that follow if we choose to care. End of primary report. Additional brief comments on laboratory methods employed to follow at a later time. So he's going to be doing um, spectro, um, spectrometer um, analysis. So I will um, put that up online. I'll make another video on that as well as the reports come in, as the uh, findings progress. But um, so that's that's um, the report. Um, it's, it's, it's lengthy, it took a while to read it. I was going to just gloss over it and hit on the, the highlights of it, but it's just too important, um, really, uh, to... Um, be skimping and scraping on it. I just had to read the whole thing. Uh, this stuff is falling down on us all. We're all breathing it in. We're all absorbing it into our skin. And we need to be very concerned about this. Um, I've been documenting these programs, this climate engineering, global programs, chemtrailing, whatever you want to call it. I've been documenting this for, for years now. And I've had my rainwater checked here in Wexford, had it tested for aluminium, and it showed high levels of aluminium. So I, I know the aluminium is coming down in the rain. Um, we know aluminium is, is causing the Alzheimer's. You know, we know this. We know that these programs are causing so many problems, health problems. We know it's causing respiratory problems. We know, we know that it's causing uh, vitamin D epidemics with the lack of sunlight being created by all of, all of these artificial clouds that are, that are being uh, generated now all over the world through the chemtrails through the different um, ionospheric heaters and cloud generators we know that there's just a litany of problems being created by these by these programs and now i have conclusive evidence that um that there's also now nanotechnology falling down from the sky and um you know nanotechnology can be used for many many different things nanotechnology is is it's been proposed as um, a transhumanist um, means to uh, change humans, um, to uh, alter DNA. Uh, I was at a, a climate engineering conference in Berlin in 2014, and not only were they talking about taking control of the Earth's climate, climate engineering, but they were also talking about human engineering. And this guy, Jameis Caskio, He's a, a futurist. He was one of the main speakers there. Uh, he's a, what you call a futurist or a transhumanist. And transhumanists believe that um, the human form is inadequate and it needs to be altered. And in this um, presentation, he spoke about changing the human genome. Um, look, I'll just go down here. In the last few years, we have seen an increase in ideas to intentionally interfere in natural processes on an unprecedented scale. Uh, and with unforeseeable consequences for the future of humankind and ecosystems. Both climate engineering and human engineering understood as biotechnological, cybernetic or interventions in the human body for enhancement of human beings can be understood as currently controversial, controversial debated potential technology, technological solutions for global problems. Furthermore, they are both symptoms for at least two diverging quests. First for stewardship, looking for ways how to steer different systems all the way from the human genome to the climate system with long-term perspective to create a truly sustainable community. This is, this is all out in the open. They're talking openly about this. Engineering the climate, which they've been doing for decades, and human engineering, which they're possibly already doing. I don't know. I can't prove they're doing it, but I can prove that the technology is coming down. Nanotechnology is coming down. This is National Geographic from April of 2017. 
talking about changing human beings and um, the next human taking evolution into our our own hands um, the dark side of transhumanism genetic engineering and nanotechnology and scalar weapons this is all mainstream science all the major scientific institutions are talking about re-engineering the climate and and re-engineering the human species um, nanotechnology is in everything by the way and I, I was only aware of this kind of I've only come, become aware of this recently nanotechnology is common is a common word these days but many of us don't realize the amazing impacts it has on our daily lives they may call it amazing but I mean this stuff could be used for good but it's it, it's 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 not being used for good it's it's in na nanoparticles um, first of all faster smaller computers can be made okay that could be a good thing nanoparticles and pharmaceutical products um, you know, it could be good or bad, but have we been told about this stuff? No, most people are using these products and they have no idea nanoparticles are in there. Um, number five here, nano, nanofibers in fabrics to enhance stain resistance. Could be good, um, but again, we haven't been told about this stuff. Um, um, most sunscreens today are made from nanoparticles and uh, drink bottles. And just so many things are made from nanotechnology and this stuff is just everywhere and most people just don't know about it but most alarmingly it's falling down from the sky and this is the the, the subject matter of this video um here's a futurist ray kurzweil in computer world he talks about using um nanotechnology uh, in 30 or 40 years we'll have microscopic machines traveling through our bodies repairing damaged cells and organs effectively wiping out diseases now how the hell are they going to get this stuff into us in 30 or 40 years or now how are they going to do this i think spraying it from the sky would be um possibly the most effective way to get it into us and here's a nasa document that discusses exactly this amongst many other things uh, it's, it's it's entitled the future is now circa 2025 and basically this document is a declaration of war against life on earth the stuff in here would blow your mind and you'd want i'd want hours to go through the whole thing but i'm just it talks about uh genetic engineering before birth okay key future technologies okay transhumanism um and just uh, crazy crazy stuff choo choo uh, um a flesh eating a flesh plant eating robot that hunts biodigests natural foods to live off the land choo choo robot inventor stuart wilkinson expresses concerns about the dangers of the robots eating humans right and then on page 43 i'm just going to go ahead and show you this it talks about what i was talking about about spraying um nanotechnology and stuff into the into the sky uh, some sensor swarms, smart dust, um, cubic millimeter or less, floats in the air currents, and nano tags, and uh, some explosive smart dust opportunities, uh, optimal positioning of explosive dust in um, air explosives. But here it says micro dust weaponry, a, me a mechanical analog to bio micron sized mechanized dust which is distributed as an aerosol and inhaled into the lungs. Dust mechanically bores into lung tissue and execute, executes various pathological missions. A wholly new class of weaponry which is legal. Absolutely just beyond. And here it talks about what apparently is legal. Microwave, RF, antifunctional and antipersonal weaponry. Uh, chemical antifunctional weaponry. Uh, acoustic weaponry. Yeah, you got tinnitus or that high pitched frequency piercing through your head like I've had for the last year and a half. Acoustic weaponry. Different frequencies. Minus ten and a half thousand hertz. That's what's piercing through my head. Bloody nightmare. Uh, and here on page 53, they speak about airborne varieties of Ebola, releasing Ebola. We need to wake up to what's going on here, folks. This is, uh, we're living in unprecedented, very, very challenging times. And, uh, if we're to ever have any hope of stopping what's going on, we must first address that these programs, um, exist.
Uh, so uh, here's my website. Uh, we need solutions. We first, as I said, we need to acknowledge that these programs exist. Um, go in here into the taking action section and I've got flyer, a flyer in there. Click on taking action. Um, you get a, my climate engineering flyer. It doesn't talk about nanotechnology or transhuman, uh, transhumanism in there. I just tried to skim the surface of it with the, the flyer. I just talk about if I can get people to wake up to the climate engineering aspect first, I, that's, 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 I, I, I think I've done my job. But um, it's far more to it than that. Uh, but anyway, there's my flyer. And uh, we all just need to get the word out. Do what you can. Please share my website here, climatechangeagenda.com. It's got a, an amazing um, database of information here. Uh, 500 climate laws designed to uh, enslave humanity in the name of saving the earth, which they are going to roll out now when they legalize climate engineering following the Paris summit. Uh, Got any amount of documentation there, all the evidence, my rain and more, um, rain and soil samples, my rain samples, uh, soil samples and blood samples from around the world from all the materials that were spraying on us, different films, weather programs and patents going back there to the 1800s, um, just 150 years of documentation on uh, weather control, um, the mass die offs, the mass die offs, all the extinctions now, we're living in the biggest mass extinction period since the dinosaurs died 60 million years ago. Uh, all caused by these programs. Crazy weather companies there, um, mainstream weather companies that you can order weather online. You can order weather tomorrow, whatever you want, rain, hail or snow. It's all real, it's all happening. So please uh, share share the information, folks. We're in uh, crazy times and it's going to take, uh, it's just going to take us to wake up to, uh, to stop what's going on. So please share this information and do what you can when you can, now that you have the chance. This is Terry Lawton for climatechangeagenda.com signing out for now.